Ziggy still wearing his uh, Ravens jersey. I know, I know, I feel you. I feel you. Praise God. Let's give Sunrise a round of applause. I told you they are requested by so many organizations and they be out playing all over the place. Yeah, I don't get jealous. That's the Lord. I love music. I can't play any of them. I can beat the drum. I know I can beat rock on the Congos. The drum is a little tough. I, I play it a little bit, but I can't do the rest of it. Andy been trying to teach me the bass, but I guess I'll stick to where the Lord told me to go. <laughs> if you be so kind, of stand to your feet. We're going to be real fast because we got uh, communion. And that's, it's okay, it's okay. We'll be fast. I know, but Pastor, you don't need to be rushing to it. I know. What did I title this message? Faith moving? Moving fast? What did I say, y'all? Faith in motion, didn't I? Amen. Dennis, I had to do that every now and then. Yeah, I had to check myself. Because I'll come up with whatever the Lord will give me something else. I told y'all to go to Genesis chapter 12, didn't I? Okay, Genesis chapter 12. Amen. Very familiar text. Genesis chapter 12. If you can't find Genesis, come up and stand next to Reverend Sterling. And the other one stand on the next side of Reverend Barber. Genesis. That's the second book in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Mary looking at me again. Amen. We got it. Genesis chapter 12. Watch this. Now the Lord had said to Abram, you notice he didn't say Abraham, he said Abel, because his name hadn't changed yet. What does Abraham mean? I told you I ain't going to pass in no dumb church now. What does Abraham mean? There you go, father of many. Many nations, father, Abraham. His name is Abram right now. Amen, somebody. Watch this. Now the Lord said to Abraham, see, there y'all go. The Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So what's your excuse? He was 75. What's your excuse? Let us pray. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for the hour. I thank you for your word. You have always been in charge. Speak to us, O oh God, like only you can. Again, I ask that you open up our eyes and clear out our ears and refresh our heart that we may receive this word and that we may stand boldly, Lord God, when we come out and do what you've called us to do. Have your way in this service you always have. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse, without faith, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, the Greek translation of the word please means to come into an alignment with God. If God's standing here, if you want his blessings, you got to stand underneath him. If God's standing here and you're standing over here, you're going to miss the blessings. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Don't care if you clean up your act. Don't care if you stop smoking. 
Don't care if you start living right. Don't care if you stop drinking. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith. I told you many times before that God requires us to walk in faith. He requires all of us to walk in faith. Habakkuk 2.4. Habakkuk, what is Habakkuk? The book of Habakkuk 2.4 said the faith, the just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17 says the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3.11, the just shall live by faith. And Hebrews 10.38 says, the just shall live by faith. We have to live by faith. God wants us to have what's called radical faith. Radical faith means somebody will look at you and say, you have lost your mind. Radical faith. Diane, somebody ought to look at you and say, you have lost your mind. Noah demonstrated radical faith. God told Noah to build an ark. He said, because I'm going to flood the earth. And I can only imagine the people laughing at him building the ark because it had never rained during that time. All their moisture came from the ground. The dew had never rained before. But God said, I want you to build an ark because I'm ready to flood the earth. And I can only imagine people sitting there laughing. At, are you that dumb? What are you building? It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind. God told Noah, he showed him the rainbow sign. He said, it won't be water, but fire next time. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind. God showed Noah, showed him the rainbow sign. It won't be water, but fire next time. They tell me when the water began to pour. They knocked on the windows. They knocked on the door. They didn't know exactly what to do. You don't want this to happen to you. I said, it's going to rain. That's all no was singing. It's going to rain. You better get ready. <laughs> Amen. It's going to rain. Radical faith. The woman with the issue of blood had radical faith. She knows she was not supposed to be in the midst of people. But she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be healed. Everything she had, she spent it. Nothing helped her. But she crawled through the crowd knowing she, if anybody touched her, they would be contaminated. By the law, she was not even supposed to be in the midst of people. But she crawled. She crawled. She said, I'm desperate. And she got to him and she touched the hem of his garment. And he stopped said, virtue, who touched me? Virtue has gone out of me. Something poured up out of him. Her faith poured on him. Just the touch of his hem of his garment. He felt virtue go out of him. She was desperate. She was radical. God requires us to have radical faith. Not crazy faith. Mind you, not crazy faith. I tell you, you go out there and cash that bad check, and you think God gonna cover for you, you're gonna be in a jail cell with Bubba or Lucy. Not crazy faith. You go out there and say, I know this bus coming, and I ain't gonna worry. It ain't going that bus gonna run you right on over. I ain't talking about crazy faith. Radical faith. See, faith don't make things easier. It only makes it possible. It only makes it possible. 
you will still be required to go through some things. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had to go through the fiery furnace. Oh, they faith, they had it, and it was radical. They still were required to go in the fire. You are going to still be required to go through some things that's going to test your faith. Daniel still had to go into the lion's den. Don't think your faith is going to keep you out. Your faith will usher you in. <laughs> Not for you, but for other people to see it at work. Even King Nebuchadnezzar, when he looked in and they saw a fourth person, oh, he had to get down and bow and start worshiping the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Faith. We're called to faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith people don't wait to see it. Faith people act. Too many of us sit around and we wait before we have faith. No, God wants you to step out and trust him. And if he doesn't do it the way you want him to do it, you're going to get the glory anyway. Your grandmothers, your grandfathers, they had faith. And they prayed to see a day like today. No more slavery. They went through it. But I can only imagine them crying to the Lord late at night, looking up in the stars, saying, please don't let my great, great, great grandchildren go through this, what I'm going through. And they had faith. They didn't see it. But because of their prayers and their faith in God, we are what they prayed for. <laughs> we are. I told you, you couldn't be in a better time and season than right now. Born in the 30s was tough. Born in the 1890s was tough. Born in the 40s was tough. Born in the 60s, there was so much racism. It was so bad. And just look at the season that you're born in now. We are on the verge edge of things getting now crazier. That's why I feel sad for our younger generations. We're praying for them because we're going to pass away. Yeah, our numbers are already ticking. We're going to pass away. But it's little ones like this going to have to go through that. We're in a more of a moderate season in our lives. This period of time from the 60s up to now, through 2020, it's ugly heads begin to rear up again. But most of us are on our way out of here to heaven, I hope. Amen. But it requires faith. We have to walk in faith. Faith pleases God. Faith is always in motion. Always in motion. Romans 10, 17 says what? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. In James chapter 2, verse 26, it says about faith. Faith is dead without works. We can talk about faith all day long, but where's your work? Do your work testify to your faith? Or are you just opening our mouths talking about faith, but there is no work behind it? Sunrise, we walk in faith. And God has been blessing us. And we'll continue to move forward. Scared to death. Scared to death. And I'm glad because the minute we lose our fear, we'll start beating our own self on the chest saying, God, look what we did. We ain't did nothing. We can't do it. We are scared. We don't know where our next meal is coming from. We think we know. There were several young people in here last Sunday who were on the temporary edge of coming up to give their life to Christ. They were just leaning, Paul. They were leaning forward like this, Paul, but they didn't come. And I told them, the next hour is not promised to you. 
if God's calling, you better come. They were leaning. A couple of hours later, they found out Kobe Bryant was dead, and then they panicked. Don't care who you are, your days are numbered. Your days are numbered. And if God called you and you did not step, when you die, it would be too late. He would say, you heard the message and you rejected it. He says, I need you as a sinner so I can break you. But when you think you got to get right before you come to me, it won't be long before you start beating your chest. God, look at me. I told you, sin will not keep you out of heaven. It's your rejection of God's call will keeps you out. If sin kept you out of heaven, none of us would be going to heaven. None of us. Because all of us sin. All of us. But because we know we are sinners and we accept his love and we accept his grace and mercy, he said, now nah, I got you. And when I do call you home, you'll be with me, not with Satan. But when you're gone, it's too late. You'll never get another chance. That's why we got to walk by faith. We have to walk by faith. Faith is incredible. I told you many times before, God started off in faith. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, verse 6, verse 9, verse 14, verse 19, verse 21, verse 24, verse 26, verse 29. The Bible said, and God said. And in verse 31, it said, and then God saw what he said, and it was good. He didn't wait to see it, to call it. He called those things that be not as though they were. And since we are chips off the old block, we're supposed to walk in faith. Every last one is supposed to walk in faith. It may not look like it, but you have to walk in faith. Faith is designed to break you. It's designed to destroy your comfort zone. Because when God calls you, he's going to call you out of what you're familiar with. He's going to make you step out on something you never stepped out on before. He'll say, now nah, I got you right where I want you. In our text, he told Abram, he said, I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to leave your surroundings. I want you to leave. In other words, he said, I want you to leave everything that's shaping your way of thinking. Everything that's shaping your way of thinking, I want you to leave it. I want you to get inside of a bubble. So it's just you and me. Just you and me. You can't hold on to nobody else. You are suspended in midair. And there's nowhere else you can turn. And you fall to your knees and said, I can't do nothing now but trust you. I can't do nothing now but trust you. He told him to leave your family. His father was an idol worshiper. The book of Joshua 24, I think verse 16. His daddy was an idol worshiper. His house, they worship idols. God said, I need to get you away from all of that. Until you leave, you'll never see what God has totally in store for you. Until you leave. Until you leave. And step out of your comfort zone and find yourself suspended in midair. And you've got to trust him. He said, everything you're familiar with, he said, leave it. Go to the place I'm going to show you. But can I first get a glimpse? No. I just want you to walk where I tell you to walk. Get away from everything that's shaping your way of thinking. Leave. Leave your friends behind. He said, because if you do it, I'm going to bless you. I will make your name great. And all three major religions look at Abram, or now Abraham, as the father. Christianity, Judaism, Islam. They all 
gravitate to Abraham. God said, I will make your name great. I will make you a blessing. And you shall be a blessing. What is a blessing? The car is not the blessing. The house is not the blessing. The money is not the blessing. The job is not the blessing. Those are the results of the blessing. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, the blessing is that God has given you the power to get wealth. It is what God puts in you to bring what you have. You had the wind chimes hanging up on your porch. And all of a sudden you hear them going, ding, 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 and you said they go to wind. That's the results of the wind. That's not the wind. That's the results of the wind. Ding, 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 ding. They're going to win. Mm -mm. The wind's already gone. Those are the results of the wind. The house is not the blessing. They are the results of the blessing. Deuteronomy 18 is an empowerment to get wealth. The things that you're familiar with, leave it. And I will bless you. But here's where you got to be careful. Because when you have people hanging around you and they start seeing the blessing of God upon you, it won't be long before they start trying to tell you what to do. They'll start trying to tell you what to do. Because they'll start getting the residue from the blessing God put on you. And if it ain't be long, they're going to try to tell you what to do. Well, I think you ought to go here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He took Lot with him. God never once told him to take Lot. He took Lot with him. And then when Lot with him, with him, it wasn't long before there was trouble. Because Lot's people and Abraham's people start getting into arguments. And Abraham had to tell Lot, come here. There's no need of us quarreling like this. You see all this land. To the right is all green grass and water. To the left is all desert. You choose which one you want and I'll take the other one, Lot. Lot said, I'll take the green grass and all the water. Abraham said, fine, go take it. I'll take the desert. And Lot went. The Bible says, after Lot went, then the Lord spoke to Abram. He didn't speak to him while he was there. That's why you got to be careful who you got hanging around with you. When God calls you, he calls you. Your family can jack you up if you ain't careful. When God deals with you, he deals with you. Watch out for your wife. Watch out for your husband. Watch out for your kids. Because when God calls, he'll call you. They can get the residue from it, but you got to be careful because they'll be trying to influence what God is trying to tell you. And you find yourself like Adam. That woman you gave me. Amen, man, somebody, Pete. You know what I'm talking about. Don't leave me hanging out there. Shoot, Lady Pearlman done jumped all in my case when I get home. What do y'all brothers help me out? Y'all scared of her too, huh? I don't know. So, you, Ray, you help me. I know real help me. Praise God, somebody. But you got to be careful. He called you. He says, I'm going to break you, Yvonne. He said, I'm going to break you. I need to get you in a place where you can't trust nothing else but me. I told you I had to step away from Sunrise. I mean, step away from Argonne Hills. I had to step away. Didn't want to. So comfortable. I didn't want to. I struggled with it. And still, the residue of it is still on me. Even to this day. Because I invested so much in it. But he said, I need to get you away from there. I need to put you in suspension where you have no reference at all. And now you are by yourself. Now let me speak into you and tell you what I want you to do and where I want you to go. And 
everybody's not going to agree with you. When you find yourself in that state, some people will look at you as you betrayed them. They'll say, you betrayed me. I invested so much in you, but God called me to another direction. I had to go. And as you go, sunrise, God, he has blessed us. <laughs> because of our obedience. If you're obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you go, he said, I will make your name great, sunrise. I will bless you, sunrise, and you will become a blessing. You will go out and bless other people because I'm blessing you because you're obedient to what I say. You didn't look to the left. You didn't look to the right. You didn't listen to what other people said. You follow what I told you to do. Now, only one who can bless you like me is me. And because you were able to step out on faith, the ten lepers, Jesus told them, I know you're still leprous. Look at your hands. Look at your fingers, they're falling off. But Jesus, we can't go to the priest unless we clean. He said, go show yourself to the priest. Even in your condition of leprosy, go show yourself. And because of radical faith, they took the step to go to the priest. And the Bible said, as they went, they were healed. They were scared, just like many of you and me. Scared. But you got to step out. You got to step out. And if you step out, he'll start clearing the way. And you'll say, ooh, but don't brag. Amen. But don't brag. I told you, don't brag. Because you were standing here scared. And he motivated you to go. And then he start clearing out. And you say, oh, I got this now. I got it. You better give him the praise. You better give him the praise. Let me leave you with this. Faith is required. If we want to please him, Abraham was 75 years old. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you're going through. It may be an illness. Come here, Cunningham. He has a testimony, and many of you are aware. Come here, Reverend Barbara Sterling. He almost gave up. He almost, come here Lillian, where Lillian at, come here. I've spoke to her so many times on the phone while she was driving to the hospital, crying, crying, had me on the phone, crying with her. <laughs> One time in, in the old building, we circled up in the back room and I called him. I don't know if he could hear us or not. I don't know if he's in a coma or not. But we put this, remember we had the cell phone? Put it on speaker. Reverend Barbara prayed. And we all circled up. The men, the deacons, we all circled up while I was in the hospital. And we prayed and prayed and prayed. The doctors didn't even have the faith. Didn't even have the faith. And it was dire. It was dire. It, when I tell you it was dire, it was that sometimes he would be down for two days, and sometimes three days before he would open his eyes. But look at him now. Yeah. Look at him now. Look at him now. Look at him now. Faith people got in the room. And you guys, on the, on, when the emails you out, you got in the room, you started praying. It didn't look good, I'm telling you. It didn't look good. It didn't. Deacon Andy trying to give him potato chips, knowing the blood pressure high anyway, but anyway, God bless you, my brother. <laughs> but I thank God for you, and I thank God for your faith in Lillian. Girl, you held him up. Yeah. You held him up. But all God asks if we walk in faith. He asks if we walk in faith. And whatever he decides to do is going to be far better than we can imagine. Far better. Amen? Amen? Let this be your watchword today. Watch Abraham. He told Abraham to leave everything you're familiar with. Everything that's shaping your way of thinking. He said, get rid of it. I'm going to break you 
So everything's in you is going to run out of you. Then I'm going to fill you with me and then watch you work. And when God, we say there's no one like him, but when God fills you up, Ooh, Lord have mercy. Amen. Let's stand to our feet and give God a hand praise.